the final here for the tonight's $300 minimum 4v4 variants, of course, here on December 28th. We're heading back here toward St. Marie du Mans for map number one in our current best of three. Because like I said, we've got King Fish going up against Mentality. Yes, the team names are uh, continuing on to be interesting. King Fish, of course, consisting of Neo Convict Tricks and Instincts. And for the guys on Mental Mentality, excuse me, we've got Rampy Solo Huddle and Lyric. So with that, as the map does begin to take place, map number one, of course, or excuse me, hardpoint number one, will be taking place in Bottom Red, a restaurant. As like I said, when it comes down to this map, we're kind of breaking things down in the other series on St. Marie du Mont. Essentially what the kind of main focus is, is you know, granted, hardpoint number one and hardpoint number four, they're great, right? They're fantastic hardpoints. But generally, the chunk of seconds are really going to be coming from hardpoint number two and hard point number three, of course, on winery and in back parking lot. So, of course, the focus coming through looks like currently the blue team, a.k.a. the group from Kingfish. Make that rotation through lookout post. It looks like it will work out successfully for them. Trixilla doing the damage necessary, but Rampy actually ends up picking off one from the side. Neo is there for the challenge. Finds two, maybe. Yes, able to shut down Huddle. Third in his mitts, but now Lyric is there for the pickup. So back and forth as these two teams are out for a brawl. And that's exactly what we're getting right now. Incredibly, I don't want to say scrappy, but just heavily contested fights. Kills in quick succession. And rotations that are incredibly important at that. So three currently locking down time inside of the hill right now for Mentality. Is making their way forward. Instincts, of course, holding down right now inside a lookout post. And the reason why he's advancing so far in this position, of course, does get take get, does get taken out. But instincts, I like that play for him, just trying to delay the opposition off of that last hill for as long as he possibly can, trying to guarantee his team some time to set up. But that's not at all the case. You see those red arrows making a big swing, just making their way through, paving the way forward. As looking at Rampy's point of view, he's looking for those spawns. He's looking for the player that's locking those down. And I believe he will be able to pick them up. But no, Trixilla is there trying to stay up for as long as possible. Solo's trying to get back in the fight as he's getting close to streaks, man. This guy is about 300 points off of some streaks, but looks like his teammates got a few of those as well. Nothing able to come of it. Instinct shuts down one, but the points are still piling on. Lyric is locking down time in the hill, and Lyric is on a seven spray. I think it's only fair that we do hop over Lyric right now. He also earned the flamethrower. And uh, the reason why, I know I've seen a lot of people kind of post on the Reddit <clears throat> about what streaks there are to use besides the Glide Bomb and besides the Fighter Pilot. A lot of players, besides, you know, whether whether it's the Mortar Strike or, you know, whatever it may be, have kind of been focusing a lot of attention on that Flamethrower, especially when it comes into certain hills. If you're in Arn Forest, if you want to obviously lock some time down when it comes down to Bunker, I mean, honestly, what other than the Flamethrower? I, I mean, obviously in Black Ops 3, we talked about how useful that Specialist was. In certain positions, and uh, you know, granted, well, it's not exactly the same game by any means, but it still works the same. You just, I mean, if you're shooting fire toward a certain point of view, whether it's a very narrow corridor, it can obviously work out very well. And uh, most likely going to see that flamethrower come out when it comes in the bottom restaurant. But uh, fights still continuing on here. Lookout post is just 100 points nearly gained for the boys on mentality. As this group playing incredibly well here off the break, his instincts trying to. Spoil a little bit of that time. Up close and personal fight. He drops and Solo will walk away with that fight for the time being. 12-5 and five right now for this guy. Not super familiar with him. I haven't personally been able to watch any of this guy. But uh, very curious to see his overall performance when it comes down to Search and Destroy. As well as Respawns. Probably more Respawns than Search and Destroy, I think it's fair to say. And he's obviously entering the call for the time being. Nice flank coming in from Huddle. As uh, when it comes down to the mentality side, of course, for you, and most likely have heard a few of these players to the old competitive fans, you most likely have heard of Huddle, of course, uh, one of the OG Call of Duty players. Played, uh, of course, on a few known teams, especially being a Unite back in Black Ops 2 with Ponytail Clayster. Slacked and uh, Spacely. And obviously played on the MW team as well, but Slack Spacely in Classic, I believe. So, of course, has made his run and a few titles in the past and trying to get back in the game when it comes into boots on the ground. 
is I believe at uh, Cedar Hill Dallas. Huddle was actually on Imperfection. I think they had like a top 64 placement or something along those lines. But the mentality kind of team overall has changed up quite a bit as well. Of course, adding Huddle from Imperfection. Uh, they also obviously drop or pick up Solo. And I believe release Brolic and Demise uh, toward this team. So, of course, making team changes and at least in respawns. You know, granted, whether you want to compare them against uh, this roster, of course, of Kingfish. Uh, they're playing pretty well, especially when it comes into St. Marie Dumas. So it's kind of hard to predict how well they're playing when it comes down to Hardpoint. But, of course, time will tell. But to impress the moments like these are definitely ones to take note of as the SMGs are in full force. And you got to be thinking as well. And this has been kind of a lot of focus for roster changes on a lot of these teams has been how the weapon comp changes up. And honestly, if you're a team, if you're an organization, it's not always a smart strategy if after a patch you kind of want to form a roster around a uh, you know a weapon comp change or whatever it may be. But at least for right now, the speed has obviously turned up quite a bit. You're going to be seeing bars and PPSHs galore when it was kind of a factor of, you know, can subs get some love? Michael Condry obviously gave a, a lot of the sub players a big Christmas present, allowing the SMGs to, of course, be... A lot stronger and uh, kind of focusing a lot of attention on the Thompson MP40. Granted, the PPSH is still the weapon of choice, but uh, regardless, the STG and the bar have definitely gotten a lot more love. And we've said kind of goodbye for the FG42, at least for now until another patch, until another moment. The main assault rifle players are going to have to wait a little bit as uh, Solo bounces a nade off the head of Trix. Time starting to go a little bit back. Toward the guys on Kingfish, they're starting to get a little bit of momentum, and as long as they can lock down some solid points here on parking lot, that would be big. But Lyric able to get some momentum here, shuts down Rampy, or has Rampy, excuse me, to help him along with those kills. I know I've been talking about I've been talking about momentum a lot throughout this series, but doing a fantastic job at limiting the boys on Kingfish to any free seconds whatsoever. And if you're in Rampy's position, you can try to go for the challenger. He's going to hang toward the back lines. It looked like he was kind of indecisive in that play and then ends up dropping. But King Convict can't win that fight. Lyric does get traded. And now looking on here toward Lookout Post. When if you're mentality, you've kind of let this lead slip. Now it's within 30. And you've got to get some crucial moments here. to get some crucial kills as I believe, what is it? Lyric has pulled out the... Flamethrower for the moment puts that one in the back pocket and says, I'll work with that one when I need time for it. Instinct shuts down two huddles there for the trade. So back and forth we go. Nades tossed out. No one currently inside of that hill. It's currently not in control of anyone. And Convict holding this top red positioning, being aware of that next spawn, but being aware that holding this top red position down, you have a perfect point of view onto lookout post. Nice turn on there. Shuts down one. I believe that was on Rampy. And that's exactly what Convict needs. Limiting these players coming in through Arch. And that Nate, I believe, should kill him. Yes, he will drop from that one. So Rampy does get his revenge. But regardless, Rampy is going to have a little bit of a... Going to have to lick his wounds after this one. I think it's fair to say. But still looking on at the moment. Kills going down in bottom, and just like that, Kingfish are back in this one there within 20 seconds. Can they make this comeback happen? I see fire, and yes, that's because Lyric still has the flamethrower in his back pocket, using it exactly when he needs to, but Instincts, thankfully, is there to drop him, but three players fall. Three players drop from the side of Mentality, and just like that, Kingfish are now getting some time inside of the hard point. Grant, I'm trying to get so super hype about Kingfish, but the team name is halting me. Regardless, though, rotation getting ready to be made inside of Winery. Who has the current spawns? It looks like the red team, a.k.a. What the? Okay, I thought for a second, Lyric literally just ran out of that uh, yeah, flamethrower at the very last second. But it looks like it is the, currently the side of Mentality who do have those spawns. Player number two, player number four fighting for those right now. Both of them drop King Convict, the last one to try and force for these spawns. Can he make any impact whatsoever? Dropping one. Two more players in his line sight. Solo is there to pit finish him off. His winery currently locked down for mentality. Kingfish needing to have a full four-man push if they want to break this one. They did it in pass. Can they do it again? They did it on the first set of rotations. As fight's going down, it looks like they do break successfully, but they don't have the spawns in their favor. 
They're making their way through lookout posts, but not a whole lot of position is gained. Fight's going back and forth. Lyric finds two big ones. And just like that, Nilly finds the third. Tuttle is there for the trade. So two big kills to shut down the trade, along with an assist for Lyric. Does a lot for his team right now. He's currently sitting at 27 and 20. Rotation now making its way toward back parking, a.k.a. parking lot. This is where we saw the boys on Kingfish grab a, quite a few seconds, and they can do it again. Less than 20 seconds needed for mentality. Can the comeback happen for Kingfish? They need their cuts to be watched. Convict finding one. Rampy able to make somewhat of an impact, but Instincts realize that, hey, I have to stay alive for the spawns. Ends up getting dropped, and just like that, Huddle solo, all of them rushing forward. Trix really needs to wait for his teammates to try to join up with him. As player number six playing spoil, solo drops. Well, they do have spawn control. Convict and Neo to combine for two. This comeback could definitely happen for Kingfish. Lyric playing ever so passively in the back lines, but Instincts, he's pre-firing it. He knows exactly where he's at. He's pre-aiming, rather. And he knows that, hey, if I go for this kill, I have my teammates to support me. Lyric has to go for the challenge, and he's not able to win it. No kills found. And just like that, we are going to see a lead change here. It was 185 to 233. Now it's going to be, what, 237 to 233 in favor of Kingfish. Lookout post now up, and it is the side of Mentality who has current spawn control. But Convict finds one, Solo finds the second, and Neo is there for the final trade. Rampy coming on the flank isn't able to make any impact whatsoever. No kills found for him. And right now, Mentality trying to rush their way forward. Trix drops one. Trades coming in from either side. Lead change yet again in favor of potentially Mentality, but no, player gets picked off. One point advantage right now for Mentality. Huddle and Rampy finding two. Trix ends up dropping. Player number four needs to make something happen, but no, is it going to be there? Can they get inside of the hill? But no, it will not happen. Mentality will win this hard point. 250 to 240, a 10 second difference between these two groups. As this one came down to the wire and we were talking about St. Marie Dumas, man. I was talking about this coming in to both series, whether it was the last semifinal or this current one, was that when it comes down to Hill 2 and Hill 3, being in winery and being in parking lot, you can pick up so many seconds, especially in parking lot. Just because, if, of course, if you get the enemies kind of killed, you spawn them toward back radio tower, and it is just a trek back. I mean, you're literally tossing nades, and it's just such a... I mean, you're once you die, it's almost like along with the you know a little bit of a respawn delay that you know, once you spawn up, it's a good maybe six or seven seconds before you're back in that action. So it's obviously a, a huge swing that we end up seeing coming in from Kingfish. Granted, the rotation gets made toward lookout post, and mentality is there. They're there for the trades, but regardless, solid comeback from Kingfish. And granted, you were down... But you obviously made a comeback, and I think that that's something that they can kind of take with them throughout the, the next maps, or whether it's whether it ends in the Search and Destroyer, or whether it obviously goes to the CTF for map three. But still, that was a decently sized comeback, and you know, granted, while it is a little bit of a loss, I think personally they're feeling pretty good that they were at least able to kind of hang with them that close. And I talk about the reason why Kingfish is here. They knocked out Proofy Kill and Human Jesus' team in one of the prior rounds, and I believe in the uh, round prior to this one, uh, they end up taking out Johnny, Fastball, Stamino, and Supreme Agility, which I believe is a newly formed roster there as well. So this group obviously has a point to prove. They've taken out two Titans in tonight's, uh, of course, UMG 44 variant, but still... They lose this hard point in very close fashion, and now we focus our attention toward the search and destroy. Things are about to get slowed down, and I'm very curious to see how Kingfish will respond because I personally think, in the scheme of things, and based on the $300 minimum 4v4 variant here, of course, on December 28th, we're hopping in here toward map number two, search and destroy on London Docks. Just in case you forgot, map number one end up going... 250 to 240. Very close hardpoint matchup between both of these squads. However, it was the boys on mentality who were able to walk away with it. And now looking forward here toward some search and destroy. Looking at round number one with a little bit of an advantage overall in the series. We've got the boys on offense. It is mentality making their way forward. Currently a three versus three. And with that being the case, of course, we do apologize for the... Uh, Caster overlay being in the first person point of view. Nothing we, we currently do about that, so we do apologize for that. But uh, still looking on. Two versus two. Things beginning to shape up. As it looks like fights starting to take place. Solo able to drop one, and just like that, the plant goes down. And the round count along with it. As we will take a look finally at the first person point of view. Lyric doing the work necessary. 
that will be round number one in the books. So when it comes down to London Docks overall, I think this is one search and destroy map that we can kind of take a look at and say, you know what, both sides can definitely be worked. Both sides can definitely see some action toward it. So when it comes down to A, of course, on water side, or B, toward bus side, really both can definitely get some action. But uh, Huddle, as well as Solo, taking a look at today's site. Nothing really found exactly. So they're going to advance back to their position toward middle and see if they can find anything. But fight's going down quick. Instincts has actually found himself on the flank, and Lyric doesn't even know about it. The three versus two, Solo holding that back lines with the STG, is able to make it work, and now Convict, back-to-back -back rounds here for the boys on Kingfish, as this B site so far has not treated them kindly, so needs to grab the bomb, successfully does so, and I believe the side peak ends up into finding some positioning there for Convict, not 100% sure if he does spawn him or not, but regardless... Looking on, up close and personal fight meets two players inside a closet. And speaking of two, just like that, Mentality has found a pair of rounds off the break. And like I said, if you're Mentality at this point in this aspect of the game, and I think when it comes into best of threes, of course, we had a little bit of a, a break trying to get everyone in the lobby. But generally, you're just trying to keep that momentum from that first hard point and into the search and destroy. Like I said, I think in that last series, I was also discussing this as well in the other semifinal, was that... Kind of make it seem as if both maps are just one. And make it seem as if this momentum kind of keeps going forward. They don't have any chance to kind of get a little bit of a breather. And so we'll see how Mentality can kind of keep up that vision. As they're right now, Trix was waiting for that aggressive rush inside of A. However, he has not seen that whatsoever. And currently it is a three versus two fight onto this B-bomb site. Rampy watching the flank and, uh, of course, not going to have anyone in that position for now. Granted, a good strategy. And uh, actually, he's holding both barrel building and that coal room. So, like the idea, Neil somehow does not get that shot off in time after finding one prior. But two versus three, Convict able to shut down one, but players toward the side as back to back to back rounds. One from Mentality. And they have all been on the exact same site in basically similar positions where it was just first bloods or just overall man count advantage. Offense and defense alike. They're winning these. And if you're Kingfish, do you try to keep working on your issues? Do you try to make it seem as if, hey, we're not going to go to B, but in reality, you kind of play devil's advocate and go for it anyway? Or do you change things up and go toward A? And it looks like they will be at least tempting toward A. Tossing out that smoke and Huddle does try to go for the pre-fire. Does not spot anything off the break, but that nade could do some damage. You see those red arrows start to retreat back toward B. And since that smoke was tossed out, they don't get anything. And you see that streak doesn't earn anything as well. And most likely the streak doesn't find anything because all four players from Kingfish most likely have Mountain on. But it looks like uh, Solo does not. He has infantry on. So I'm a little bit surprised. Maybe they thought that Solo was a person flanking or... I'm not 100% sure, but regardless, they put that streak down and... You can see they're a little bit confused, they're a little bit scattered. They obviously see the bomb gets planted, so they know at least where the players are going to be positioned around. But still, no player has fallen yet, and there's still there's only 25 seconds left before this bomb explodes. Trix finds one. Finds one onto Rampy. Solo is able to drop one on the Convict. Up close and personal fight. Trix is there for the finish, and now Huddle left in a one versus three. Can't even switch over to his, perspe his perspective fast enough. As he gets dropped, and you'll see Trix here. Bronze Star along with the final kill cam. He'll find the final two, but generally, if your mentality... I mean, granted, you waste a streak in that round. Plain and simple, you waste a streak in that round, and I'm pretty surprised I think it was Solo who had an opportunity to spawn out where that kind of flip of the bomb sites was taking place because, of course, we saw them make that initial rush toward A, but they wrapped back toward B, and despite having a streak in the air, they're unable to spawn it. But regardless, advancing forward, a round gained for the boys on Kingfish. So at least some light at the end of the tunnel. But just as we start to say that, three players fall. And Neo is wondering what exactly just happened to my teammates. As he gets met with some shots coming in here from ramping up. Close and personal fight. The PPSH is out to play. It's back to B we go is essentially what Mentality is saying at this point. Definitely living up to their uh, title. 
keeping on that B mentality, kind of keeping on and working out the same strategies. Because until it causes them problems, they're going to keep doing the exact same thing over and over and over again. But player number two, Solo. Player who's currently watching from that backside positioning onto A. Does he gain any information is the thing. Looks like a quick plant here from the boys on Kingfish. They tried this exact strategy in their last offensive round. Didn't work out for them. They made the rotation, and that's the round they end up winning. So, a successful plant onto A, a quick rush. And if you're in their position, this is almost a must-need round. As Lyric and Huddle picking off two. Third player gets found just a few seconds before that. Instincts last alive. As just complete dominance being shown at the moment. If you are on the side of mentality, as we're going to look at the solo really quick, see how close he is towards streaks. As uh, <laughs> he's more than close, I think it's fair to say. I think he's already got a few to work with. He's nearly doubled up on that fighter pilot. And if you're on that death screen for Kingfish, you're just like, okay, so next offensive round, or next run just in general, we need to not necessarily play passive, but we just need to kind of hide. I think it's fair to say. And I'm curious what we're going to see from mentality, because do they rush and try to get a plant down and then play for the streaks, or... Do they kind of play passively let the streaks do the you know initial damage? Looks like they are going to be going for that aggressive rush, and who wouldn't at this point? You're dominating them constantly. As uh, Neo, though, finds the first blood. Not a big fan of that rush from Trix. Granted, he's trying to gain some information, but in all reality, just not one that you really needed to rush. But regardless, they do and at least will walk away with this round. And I said a little bit of a sloppy play for mentality. Just in general, granted, they're able to pick off one that was kind of gifted to them. But uh, you make a pretty aggressive rush. Thankfully, they don't use any of their streaks. So Solo obviously has you know, a number of different things to rock. But I'm not sure if he found a kill before he died. I think if I can ask the spectator to hop on board with Solo really quick heading into this next round. I'm very curious to see if uh, he does have anything. So yes, he did indeed earn that glide bomb. Did not double up on the fighter pilot, however. So with that, has full streaks to work with. The motor strike in his back pocket. And up close to personal fight, the initial engagement's happening, and the reason why they rush toward that A site is because there's a little bit of a delay on those streaks. You like to imagine. Or maybe they just kind of dupe solo and thinking that they'd be playing passively as well. Definitely could be the case. As two players have fallen for either side. Or two players in total, rather. As Convict finding solo through mid. Lyric and Huddle. Left to do the damage on the flank is Lyric. It was shut down one and up close and personal fight. Huddle ends up dropping. 18 seconds left. A lot of places to hide if you're in the position of Kingfish right now and just sneaking off in the corner. It is a Kingfish player, as it will be Instincts. Using that knowledge, using his Instincts. Okay, I, I just couldn't get away with it. I tried. I tried to come up with like a synonym for Instincts, but I just couldn't. But uh, uses it well. And they're not out of this one. Like I said, we saw a 5-3 to three comeback happen on London Docks in our prior series. Can we see it happen again? So back on offense are the boys of King... Or excuse me, back on offense, excuse me, are the guys on mentality, rather. And Solo. They're going to give him the point, and, you know, I get it. It's working. Keep going with it. He's the objective player. But when you're thinking about overall streaks... He's the guy that you want to keep alive. And Neode is there. Great if they get the bomb down. That's fantastic. And they could very, very easily walk away with the round victory. But such a risky play to give your bomb planter or give your streak earner the bomb. Just because of how early he can die, those streaks could definitely not become useful. And also, you give another player an opportunity to use streaks for your team. And so with that, Huddle is the last up. And he's got a snipe rifle. Let's see if he can do any damage. Player just around the corner toward his right. Can't find it. And so just like that, Trix will be able to grab the defuse. And now we're at 5-4. to four, And in back-to-back -back rounds, streaks haven't even been put into play. And so you're giving the other team an opportunity to earn streaks at the exact same time. So very kind of scary point of view right now for mentality. And it looks like, uh, what was that, one player who times out? I believe Huddle times out, so at least as far as my knowledge is concerned, we're going to continue to play this round out, and we'll obviously get word as to what happens with it 
later, but here comes the streak from Solo. Solo's gonna call in the streaks. He's calling in the mortar strike. He finds one along with it. Streaks aren't even needed, but immediate one versus three. Why? Because there's only three players on the team right now. For the guys in mentality, so where does Rampies play here? The streaks get called in. And nothing is earned from it. Rampy to the side is able to pick up one onto Trix. Can they win an immediate three versus four? 18 seconds left. He has to go for the rush. He has to get the defuse. An extra 7.5 on his overall time management will not be found. And just like that, are we headed to a round 11? I don't even know. I have no, I have no idea what suspense this is. I love it. So Huddle spawns out. Obviously gets timed out. Not 100% sure as to whether or not the game will be restarted or what the call is on that. Are they going to play it out? Well, we're just going to see what the players do, I guess. And uh, I guess we're playing it. Sorry, Huddle. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I guess we're playing it. They're going to go for it. All right. Do or die. What was this? A 5-2? 5-1 lead? I don't even remember. Something like that. No, mine has been boggled. And Solo still has streaks, by the way. Keep that in mind. Solo still has streaks. So it's almost kind of like a four versus four, if you count the streaks. Maybe not. But there goes the streaks. Neo finds a huge pick on the Solo. A huge pick. He holds onto the streaks. For Solo, he literally was doubled up on streaks. He was flowing with them. He was overflowing with fighter pilots and glide bombs. And he never gets the chance to use them. A two versus four. And Huddle's probably calling Solo right now on his phone and saying, hey, what's happening? What's going on right now? What's happening is Turnt finds a headshot, but just like that, Lyric, one versus three, can't find this one into tricks, and I believe, yes, that should be a win in the books for Kingfish. As I want to say, that was, what, a five to two? At least a five to three comeback for Kingfish. Like I said, uh, there still is a little bit of a chance that maybe there's a restart potential. I'm not 100% sure on the overall ideal of that. But uh, still, a big momentum for Kingfish. If someone could put in the chat what the exact lead was, I'm not 100% sure. It was at least 5-2, to two, I feel like. At least 5-2. to two. And you know what? I understand the fact that you know, a player spawns out, a player gets timed out. That obviously happens. I totally get that. But you literally had streaks. Like, it was, what was it, 5? It, it was round number 8, I think. And they're giving Solo the bomb. And it's like, why are you giving Solo the bomb? The man has full streaks already. He plants the bomb down. He immediately dies by a nade. Okay, I get that. It's a throwaway round. One that I, I'm not a fan of throwaway rounds by any means. But hey, it's a throwaway round. Okay, honestly, probably should have given the bomb towards someone else because they get hard to earn towards streaks. That's going to be, you know, something for them. And then as rounds start to progress, don't use streaks. He uses a, a mortar strike. Uh, I believe, on one of the bomb sites, doesn't get any kills with it. And it's just like time after time after time. You, I mean, it was just like you were at the highest of highs, and then it was just like they got overconfident, I feel like. They make a rush toward A that they didn't need to. They you know, don't use solo streaks whenever they had the opportunity to. They don't play passively. They don't play for a first pick and find it. And that's the worry that you have to have in the back of your mind, especially when it comes to an online play. Granted, timeouts can happen. I totally understand that. And that's the thing that obviously occurs in the last two rounds. But that one shouldn't have even gone to around 10. That shouldn't have even gone to around 11. Like, that one should have been closed. That way, Huddle was still in the game, I feel like. So, regardless, it's a sketchy way to win. Not a sketchy way, but it's like a unfortunate way to win. But regardless, it is a W in the books, I believe, for the guys on Kingfish. Is now they're looking at Flak Tower and saying, hey, this is a total restart. This is great. We love this. And mentality, fair to say, they, they lose this one in uh, round 11. So kind of an awkward point of view. Welcome back, everyone, of course, to the $300 minimum 4v4 variant. We're hopping in toward our last semifinal matchup taking place between Kingfish and Mentality. It has been an interesting one, to say the least. We've got here toward Flag Tower, but it has been an interesting story, to say the least. Mat number one was St. Marie Dumont on a hard point. We ended up seeing a 10-point game. A huge comeback happened for the guys on Kingfish. However, it was Mentality who was able to walk away with the game number one victory. Heading in toward mat number two, search to start on London Docks. We ended up seeing a 5-1 to one lead for the boys on Mentality. They're feeling confident. They're feeling good. Honestly, I think they feel a little bit too overconfident. Huddle actually ends up getting timed out. And what was it, like round 10, I believe, or round 9? And it was... Kingfish, who are able to make a comeback and actually win a map off of it after being down five rounds to one. They're obviously here on CTF Flag Tower. They've taken out some amazing teams so far. They took out Proofy Kill on Human Jesus' team. 
They also just took out uh, Johnny Fastball, Stamino, and Supreme Agility. These guys are feeling good, and they've got to be feeling on top of the world right now after winning that last search and destroy. So you've got to be imagining at least momentum should definitely have been on the start of mentality, right? Because they were up a huge margin, and I guess you could say their mentality just really wasn't there, sad, sad to say. The team name, not living up to the title, but still, regardless, playing a three versus four the last two rounds is kind of unfortunate. But looking forward here, of course, now to CTF on Flat Tower. Expect to see probably at least, I would say, six PPSHs. Uh, might see like a bar here or there, but uh, even during the FG kind of rain or the FG meta, as Trix will go and grab the flag, it was a matter of three SMGs and one FG, or excuse me, three SMGs and one FG42. So, with that being the case, Flat Tower, obviously a very uh, kind of synchronized map. As it looks like uh, Rampy trying to do some damage, nearly grabs the flag, but uh, looks like the return will end up coming through. But very fast place gameplay doesn't really play like London Docks. I know it's kind of similar. People kind of compare the two maps because Iron Forest is just so much different than these two, but um, doesn't really play the same. You know, granted, you can get kills in the base and immediately escape with the flag for the most part, but the spawns can be interesting when it comes in a flat tower. You can be spawning on either side at, at different times. Like I said, it's a very synchronized map as uh, Lyric is able to drop two inside of his base. And the big 1v1 going down, Huddle is able to win it, and thankfully uh, Rampy was there to, to provide some cover fire if it was necessary, but still, this one a little bit closer quarters when it comes to London Docks overall. When it comes to flag grabbing, the spawns can definitely grant it to where their uh, returns are a little bit easier. So something to kind of keep in mind as the map does progress. Probably won't see as high of a score line as you would on London Docks, but definitely still possible. But speaking on flag grabs, Rampy is the one with it in his hands and tricks. Finally, is able to get the line sight on him. Necessary takes out a headshot there onto Huddle as well. Taking names and taking heads as he finds he's gonna get another kill. This one onto Lyric. Found three kills through mid-map. And playing passively inside of the base. And they know he's gotta be around here somewhere. Hitmarker comes in and isn't able to find that kill on the huddle. Now, granted, while he was close to streaks, generally looking at this map, streaks aren't as big of a factor as they would be on any other CTF map, just because of the fact of how much cover there is on this, whether it's in your building, the other team's building, middle, you know, sphere, or middle circle, whatever you really want to call it. There's a lot of places to kind of grab cover on. So a fighter pilot or a glide bomb, well, there is obviously very important to have in any game mode, no matter what. It obviously isn't as useful or as uh, as high of a priority as uh, other modes or any. This is probably like the least useful map uh, for streaks to be used on in any game mode whatsoever. So, with that in mind, here over a minute remaining in this first half of CTF, both teams yet to even score a flag. As I want to say, both teams are kind of playing passively, but we've kind of seen rushes happen. For the most part, the trades have just been there. Trades have been pretty much equal for either side. That obviously goes to show when it comes down to the right side scorecard. Of course, you're near the top right of your uh, screen at the moment. You see pretty much six to seven to eight kills. Of course, Lyric, the only real outlier at 10 right now. As a solo right now, on a little bit of a streak, currently at three, locking down his base. And of course, once he does that, he's able to advance his position. And like I said, with the overtime CTF rule, teams can definitely play a lot more passively. As you see, the nice trigger that's been coming in from Solo realizes where the last player is in the back line. Tries to fund that one onto Instincts, is able to do it on a force free right now. But Convict is waiting here. Convict playing great trigger display, tries to go for the rush. And yes, just at the last second possible, Convict is able to stop that flag from going through. The Dolphin Dive is able to delay it, but for how much longer? Lyric has still got it for his team. Shots coming in the back lines, and Lyric just needs to stay alive. Will escape with this one, I believe. And yes, just like that, the boys on Mentality will be able to fire in this flag capture in the last second possible. I thought that Kingfish was able to do it. I thought that Convict had saved the scoring opportunity. But just not there. As it will be at the half, at the first five minutes ending, mentality up one to zero. So just a one position advantage, not anything too crazy by any means, but still, you see, when it matters most, clutch plays happening in solo, being a part of a lot of those, as I'm sure he's definitely trying to uh, recap after his unfortunate loss of those streaks and that search and destroy, one that I'm personally not going to forget for a while. 
But uh, three go down, actually. It looks like for the boys on Kingfish. And just like that, Instincts realize I have to wrap back to my base and at least stop a little bit of a bush. Can I get anything? No. Not able to make much happen. And the smokes are out. Smart play coming in, but the nade is much better for tricks. As Convict tries to grab the flag as well, just like that, Lyric's like, yeah, I got streaks, by the way. I'm on a six free. And it looks like uh, another player gets dropped there as well. Lyric in the back lines. I'm, so, I'm super surprised that we're seeing players kind of rock the... Uh, rock some certain streaks. The flamethrower being used in... I, th I think in, in every single series that uh, I personally have cast over tonight, I think I've seen at least one flamethrower in every single map. Hardpoint, Search and Destroy, CTF. I'm not sure if it's just players forgetting to change their classes or if it's just a fantastic streak to use because right, I, th I think it's a good streak, but uh, generally... I think in Hardpoint, it's obviously really good for certain moments, but s and I mean, hey, maybe. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe during certain positions, it can be useful. Neo literally taps his teammate in the back of the head, and it uh, looks like that their team push does get shut down, does Kingfish, but Instinct's trying to do all he can through mid-map. So Blue Arrow starting to make their way forward. Of course, map positioning is big for either of these teams. Rampy tosses up that smoke grenade. And doesn't have a whole lot of teammate support. Why? Because Lyric ends up dropping in the front lines. And now it's going to make their push a lot more awkward. But that smoke is limi limiting the vision. Finding the skill and instincts is big. And yes, Rampy is able to find one just like that. Three go down. Last player up is player number eight. And Trix ends up dropping as well. This one could be gone. They're off to the races. And no one will be here. That 7.5 respawn delay is just absolutely killer. As they finally spawn up. And by the time they spawn up, that flag is nearly already captured, if not already. Hiding in that corner was, I believe, Lyric and uh, Rampy. He wants the flag again. He's not content with just getting one capture. He's not just content with his team scoring one. He wants another one. He wants three at least. As he's making his way through mid-cut, players trying to force the issue through middle. Streaks coming in from Lyric. Granny shuts down his own teammate, but just as long as Rampy stays alive, that's the only player they need. So just like that, just over two minutes remaining in a three-flag lead. Honestly, this is essentially kind of converting it from S&D to CTF. This is essentially what the comeback kind of converts to in that last search and destroy if you are Kingfish. So you're thinking, hey, we're down, but we have made crazier things happen in the past. Maybe, I don't know if it'd be as crazy, but it'd definitely be close. But uh, players starting to drop and two players fall just like that from either side. Lyric trying to stay up in his base, but a huge battle goes down and Rampy is able to take out Trix. That definitely could have been the turn as to how this overall momentum toward the end of this first half could have gone, or second half, excuse me, for Kingfish, because if he's able to win that fight, I want to be one that goes his way. He can escape with it. Players all in the base and instincts. You see that no red players around him, no red arrows to kind of support him. He's trying to go in there by himself, and at this point, it's kind of a difficult, it's kind of an oddity to not really want to go by yourself just because of how late the game is right now. You see Rampy there with full streaks. He's 21 and 13. You see 24 and 13 for Lyric. The SMGs, of course, turning up when they absolutely have to. But generally, making late rushes and kind of playing a little bit over aggressive is what Kingfish kind of has to do. They kind of have to play dumb, essentially. And it's kind of unfortunate, but it is the case. As it looks like Constellation kills is what these currently are. As mentality, looking like they are going to finish this one off in map number three. One that, granted, it looked like they were going to let slip out of their fingers. And back-to-back -back maps. Not even just the search and destroy, but in the heart point as well. But big credit to Kingfish for making it as far as they did. They take mentality to map three. They knock out Proofy, Killa, and Human Jesus' team. They take out Johnny Fastball, Stamino, and Supreme Agility's team. I mean, they had a fantastic turn at run. And you obviously... Have to give a massive credit to those guys. However, their tournament lives will end here in the semifinals. And soaring through the skies right now is Rampy. Adding toward that overall kill total, finishing off at least 28 and 14. As this one will go in the books as a 2 to 1 victory, one that was very entertaining to say the least. As our grand finals are now set, it will be mentality. Facing off against the boys of Exomoon in one that should be a very interesting best of three to watch.
and honestly, I, I couldn't be more excited for that matchup. I, I really, I'm kind of curious to see when these two teams kind of match up against each other, kind of how the momentum will start to take place. Just because, of course, we see mentality in one of their series. They play pretty well. Granted, they choke a search and destroy. They look a little bit shaky in the hard point. They look fairly solid when it comes into the CTF. And if we know anything about Exomoon, for the most part, during different matchups, they seem pretty consistent when it comes into the hard point. Their search and destroys have been close, and their CTFs have been pretty dominant too. So I think the hard point is going to be kind of a major outlier for this. But I think both teams have been very, very close in their search and destroys, of course. And, and generally, Exomoon goes to uh, round 11 versus Havoc Esports after making a 5-3 to three comeback. And uh, Mentality chokes what was a 5-1 to one advantage. So generally you like to expect the mentality is pretty good at search and destroy. Like they should have won this one five to one, if not five to two, if not five to three, if not, you know, gone on and on and so forth. So mentality should be good at search and destroy, at least on London docks. And uh, at least for Exomoon so far, they've been pretty dominant in their search and destroys as well, winning uh, two out of, I believe two of them, at least one of the ones that we've gotten to witness so far. So, with that, very curious to see how both of these teams will line up, but it will be Exomoon versus Mentality in our grand finals here for tonight's tournament here, of course, for the $300 minimum 4v4 variant. And we're obviously going to get things lined up for you guys as quickly as we possibly can, trying to make sure these matches do conclude as fast as possible, just to make sure and keeping aware of everyone's sleep schedules and whatnot, because I believe at least here on Central Time, it is 12, 11 a.m. So. Tuesday. 